cyber criminals are working overtime. Last year in the fourth quarter alone, phishing attacks disguised as COVID testing information increased by 521%. Barracuda has identified 13 types of email threats and how cyber criminals use them to steal money from your company or personal information from your employees and customers. Find out about the 13 email threat types and how Barracuda can provide complete email protection for your teams, your customers, and your reputation. Get your free ebook at securityweekly.com forward slash Barracuda. That's securityweekly.com forward slash Barracuda. Welcome back, everyone, to Paul's Security Weekly. If you have a specific guest or topic you'd like us to cover on one of the upcoming shows, submit your suggestions for guests by visiting securityweekly.com forward slash guests. Complete that form. We review those on a regular basis. Joining us now is Amanda Berlin, Lead Incident Detection Engineer at Blue Mira, as well as the CEO and owner of the nonprofit Mental Health Hackers, as well as podcast host on Breaking Down Security and Security Trainer. Amanda, welcome to the show. We got a lot to talk about, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh my Thanks. Gosh, can I do the Thanks animal? for having me on. <laughs> Oh, so good to see you. Yeah, Sorry. it's good to see you, Amanda. It's nice to have you. Yeah, it's Hooray. nice to have you back on the show. Thanks yeah, for thanks on. for having me on. This is this is time number three. Right, and, and like apparently you've I been a, you've been a slacker in the meantime because you clearly got nothing going right? on. <laughs> like, and you're nope. and you're a mom and the uh, right. all those other things. So yeah, you're, yeah, that's you're amazing, dude. No. That's, that's awesome. Thanks. That's good stuff. Where do we want to start? I just don't right? sleep. Right, sleep, sleep. What's that, that? When we're sleep. that when we're dead? What's that? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, so uh, I haven't seen you at a conference because, like, the whole pandemic thing. Um, but right. you're you're planning to you you did some virtual stuff and you're planning to get back to actual conferences. Yeah, yeah. I've I, I think I've I mean over the last what two and a half years I think I've maybe been to two conferences. Um, mm. and those were really really tiny. I mean, I did go to the last DEF CON and there was not a whole lot of people there. Right. Um, but yeah, yep. I'm going to, I'll be at B sides charm. I'm going to go to RSA, uh, and I'll be first time speaker there, which is super exciting. Um, and what else? Wild West hacking fest. You were at, uh, you were at layer eight. You were here in Rhode Island. I was. And what's funny is you, you yes. met my, you met my oldest son. We we're talking about our kids. Cause that's what we do now. Cause we're all older now. We got yeah, kids and right. stuff. Uh, you met my oldest sure. son, who was at that at that conference, right. play, playing with all the trinkets at the mental health. Yeah, hackers. right, right, right. Um, but how you've been on talking about mental health hackers, right? And sure. um, but like, how did that change during the pandemic? I think we all struggled with Dude. like interesting aspects of mental health that yeah. we would have never considered had there not been lockdowns and masks and right. and a lot of it's like so much fud like in the most amount of fud yeah. I mean, we said we have fud in cybersecurity. like the fud around covid was in med yeah like medicine is insane yeah. unbelievable proportions how did that affect yeah. you? i mean did you change your strategy on mental health hackers now coming out of this yeah right? yeah so like what our, like our, our big thing during conferences is it's a place to go unwind and find some peace and quiet and talk about some mental health stuff or just sit and like chill, right? And not be on screens or not be inundated with information. When you go to like an online conference, uh, you don't want to just go to another like Zoom hangout room or something and yeah. just like be quiet. Like that right. doesn't really transfer super well. Um, so we tried that a couple of times doing like our own little rooms with online conferences and it just didn't it didn't transfer over super well. So it's kind of hard. To we do did like, a couple. It's hard to do like flarp over zoom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we do some yoga. We do some zoom yoga. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. 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 I mean, we do zoom yoga at work every like Wednesday, but I don't know. It's not the same thing. It's not. Um, I, feel, so, I, yeah, I feel like with yoga and martial arts and all those kind of things, like, being in person is really yep. where it's at. I, I will like attest to, I, I will yeah, attest to yeah, that. Yeah, because we did we did some virtual martial arts with my kids and stuff. And it's mm -hmm. like it's just not the same. Like there's something about mm -mm. going to a place that's separate from your home, being with people who all have the similar goals in the same in similar mindsets of you're just gonna practice this. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. It could be 
Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it could be Tai Chi, sure. like whatever it is. Like you're all in the same goal and you're kind of getting that that whole mindset. Yeah. So, I mean, so we did a couple other things. So we did some online like painting classes. We had a whole bunch of people that like had never painted before yeah. and we had somebody lead some painting classes. That's so fun. we, we had a couple, yeah, we had a couple sponsors for that and we like packaged up paint kits. So like, you know, the awesome. brushes and the canvases and everything and like send it out to a whole bunch of people. Uh, that is when I learned, that is when I learned not to offer international shipping for that stuff. Correct. Mm. Wicked expensive. <laughs> because, I know. Yep. You know, when there's like 10 people in India or like Japan or something that want a kit and it costs more yeah. to ship it than it did to buy all of your supplies. We went through that <laughs> dude with uh, with T-shirts, right? Because international yeah. listeners like uh, and I, I love all of our listeners I'm, and you don't want I don't want right? to leave your listeners or is people that want to participate or just like, dude, I want a hack naked shirt like and you feel bad. I'm like. It's gonna cost me more to ship you this shirt than it cost yeah. like me to print up five shirts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? It was like yeah. 80, 80 bucks per box to mm -hmm. ship. So like Oof. now it's gonna be like US and Canada only. Um so we did that a couple of times. We did mental health uh feel good boxes. So you know how you have like the subscription boxes that you can like yep. sign people up for? Yeah. Um you could like go on our website and be like, oh well, this person that I know. Um, I know they're having a rough time, right? Like with, with the pandemic specifically or with work in general, like really anything you could just like, kind of be like, I nominate this person and I want you to send them like a kit of stuff. And because, you know, we're all in information security, we never asked for like any personal information, just like what's their Twitter handle or like some public way to contact them. So that way we could be like, Hey, you were anonymously, um uh submitted for this like this is what we're doing do you feel yeah. okay giving us your address yeah please send we me some i'm stuff some random we... person who says you've won a prize send me your address <laughs> exactly <laughs> <that> <laughs> yeah um there were only a couple people that said no yeah yeah I so that's fine see that. yeah yeah that's fine so like i i mean i i did it through our official twitter and like i'm like you can like look at my my personal profile if you right, want to right. um but yeah, it was, it, it worked out pretty good. Um, so like doing stuff like that, just trying to find something that we could do mm. uh, that that would help, right? And that's, that's pretty much what we have done yeah, so far. Like mental health and uh, interactions with people is like a weird thing, right? Like mm -hmm. some people I think, like let's talk pre-pandemic, they were kind of like some people are like introverts like i don't want to interact with people but then you get into the pandemic and they're like well now i'm really separated from people and that's that's kind of oh. weird right and some of our therapy even if we were introverts was actually being around people which is kind of weird right because right. we, we would hang out i mean you would do the mental health hackers like we would hang out and it's like sure yeah, i'm kind of introverted but i kind of feel like hanging out with other people who are introverted <laughs> is therapy like it's really <laughs> It's a weird thing. The mind is a very interesting, yeah. interesting thing, right? Yeah, agreed. <laughs> what kind of what kind of lessons do you think we've learned from a corporate standpoint uh, with like Blue Mirror? Like, what kind of things have you guys transitioned to? How are you uh, making some of the hybrid stuff and applying some of the mental health things for InfoSec directly to your day job? Um, sure. how, how do we kind of um, make those transitions? Yeah, so there's a really good website called, uh, I think it's workplacementalhealth.org. I'll have to check and make sure, but it's run by the American Psycho uh, Psychological Association. And they have like a whole bunch of resources for actual companies on how to ra run good mental health programs and like bake it into what you're doing at every company. Um, us personally at Blue Mara, like, since I started, like I was like all in on that kind of stuff. So um, we've had like our, our CTO's wife is a yoga instructor. So she does yoga every Wednesday and we do a meditation every Monday morning. Um, we just recently started um, doing random company holidays. So like this, like uh, this Friday we have off because uh, we just haven't had uh, a regular holiday in a while. So they're just like, oh, Friday is a company holiday. Um, and, and 
we're really big about the the work life balance. I think like I mean, I'm sure a lot of you have been working from home for forever, right? Like this is year seven or eight or something for me. Uh, so I was used to it, but you have a whole bunch of people that were definitely not used to working at home. And they went through what I'm sure a lot of us also went through is, oh my gosh, I'm in my office all the time. I have my laptop with me all the time. I'm going to work, you know, 80 hours a week because I can, and I'm not stepping away from it. Um, and I think, I think it took people a bit to realize that uh that was a thing um I, and i'm imagining like some companies aren't even getting over it right but some i mean i think i feel like software is a unique under like not just software but like security companies and stuff is a unique industry where we can usually recognize that kind of stuff um but yeah i think i think raising awareness about it's important. but i also think there's a there's like the stages of working from home. Like you could totally create. I remember uh, Vinnie Lou creating like the the mental health stages of a pen test. Yes. And like, remember that? And he, yep. he, uh, he, oh. he uh, Bishop <laughs> Fox <laughs> now is like a giant. Crash. I'm so happy for Vinnie. Oh, I was yeah. like, wait, I'm like, oh, that's, I'm like, that makes total sense now. Everything that I remember Vinnie talking about, like that's totally the vision for his company at, at Bishop Fox. But I remember Vinnie back in the day, and he like hand drew it out, which really made for like a great effect of like the mental health stages. I forget what he called it. Was it the mental health stage of a pen test? Like you're super excited. And so the happiness aspect of the graph is like you're super because you start a pen test. You're like, this is exciting. And like you get through the first phase and you're like, oh, I haven't found anything. And like, you know, your your self-worth like goes down. And then you go, oh, like I yeah. found some, like this one thing and like it goes up. And then, you know, all the way through like, oh, I've completed it and this is great. And now I got to do reporting. And now my happiness like goes really like way down. <laughs> yep. I feel like working from home is the same thing. <laughs> like you're super excited. Like oh, I got my first work from home job. This is great. I don't have to fight traffic. I don't have to go in the office. Like I'm, I'm all set up. And then like, you know, it ends with, oh my God, I'm working 80 hours a week because I don't know when to turn it off. And, oh my God. Home. Like, I, I miss Zoom people. Yeah. yeah. I have to get on hey, another you, Zoom call. You miss people. You're like, holy right. crap. Like, I'm not interacting with any people. And you're like, I miss the outside. I miss actually going places. And yeah. Yeah. I and miss now the I got to go do Zoom year, karate. Go to conferences and actually see people and get lots of hugs and everything else. Yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait. Is Zoom karate a thing? It, it is. Oh, my. <laughs> yep. We did it yeah. for almost two years. Zoom everything is a thing now. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> I'd be like breaking the desk or the computer or the mo something that, you, that I'm not as coordinated. You're not wrong. Mm. <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> yep. But it, I mean, yeah. thankfully things are, are opening up and we're, we're getting out. But what's mm -hmm. interesting, what I, what I've found talking with people and Amanda, you were agreeing with me on this point that I think both when we look at conferences uh, today and moving forward, that speakers and attendees, I think we're in kind of the same boat, right? Whether you're just attending or speaking or doing whatever at a conference, doesn't matter. You're kind of in the same boat of, I'm gonna be really selective now. Like I've 20, like early 2020 and previous, God, we're going to all the things, right? Yep. And then oh yeah. Pandemic oh, yeah. hit and then the peak, like I'm going anywhere. And like, maybe you've done some stuff like more recently and now things are open up and you're like, you know what? I kind of like this more balanced approach of, I don't want to yes. be home all the time, but I don't want to be traveling all the time. So therefore, when I do travel, I'm going to be very selective about where I go and how often that I do it. And speakers and attendees are all in the same boat in this aspect. Yep. Yeah. I was going to like 16 conferences a year, mm. Good God. like 14, 16 conferences. And it was I thought I enjoyed it at the time. Right. Until you don't do it. <laughs> and then, yeah. and you did like, enjoy well, I really like being point. at home. But I also you did feel enjoy like, it. But, like, but then but, you go home and stay home for two yeah. or three years. And you're like, you know, I, I, I kind of like seeing my family. I know we're right. right. Yeah. But I feel right. like we all we all need to strategize too and be like, all right, like what conferences are we going to go to? Because like, I think there's going to be this great mm -hmm. separation of like truly local conferences which doesn't require mm -hmm. if any travel at all. Like I got to drive somewhere. We went to one at a local university and it was great to see everyone and, and hang out. But that was like, I drove to the office for the day. I didn't have to really travel, right? right? Um, yep. And then, you know, there are ones that are more national or international. Like which ones are we all going to go to? 
right? Like which ones are going to remain local and which ones are going to remain maybe US centric and which ones are going to be truly international, right? You get RSA and you've right. got Black Hat and DEF CON as your truly very large international style conferences, right? Wh which are the ones where we're yep. going to maybe all agree on that we're going to start to go to, or maybe there's certain, we need to talk more. Be we need, we need, we need an, app, an app to collaborate yeah. this. I like, agree, Tyler. Which friends are going to which ones we can all vote and yes. up, up vote and have a poll. That way we know which ones we want to go to because our friends are all going to be there. That yeah, because like what exactly. happened with ShmooCon, I, I just like totally dropped the ball. And also like my friends are texting me like, hey dude, like where are you? I'm like, well, shit. I'm sitting in my underwear in my living room. I'm like, I ain't, yeah. I'm like, dude, exactly. Like, I'm sitting in my underwear watching TV. I'm like, crap. Like, I totally should have went to that. It wasn't that far away. And it's not. Now, like, for us, you know, DC is an hour flight, if that. So, yeah. Yeah. We need to talk. So, has anybody ever added up the time they spent away on the road going to conferences before we got into the pandemic? No, no, no. We, we don't do those kind of, that kind of math. Yeah, it's no, depressing. I don't want to no, know. No, no, we don't do that. <laughs> it's depressing. That's government yeah. wealth. Yeah, that's yeah. the blissfully unaware part of the thing. Like right. you know, you don't want to. I don't want to know that. Yeah. So <laughs> like, I think the gauge is with your spouse. Like, are we are we around each other too much or like not enough? Like, what's the sweet spot here? <laughs> like that's for me. Like me and my wife. Like, I'm like the, the she's like, canary. Yeah, she's kind of yeah. like yeah. Like you know, maybe maybe it's time you go on a trip. Like yep. without all of us, <laughs> we, <laughs> totally fine. We, like we this other that. trip we want to go with you because that's cool. I'm like uh, that that's yeah. cool too. And this like this other trip. Like maybe it's international and it's in a bad time or whatever, and I'm like, okay, we won't we won't go to that one. I mean, that's truly how I, mm -hmm. me yeah, personally, we're I'm uh, sure we're many of us in the yeah, same we're boat, having right? the, We're yeah. having the same thing, but it's even more. It's even a little bit better than than that. Like we get to the end of the week and it'll be like a Saturday or a Sunday on the weekend, and like we'll you know done some stuff as a family in the in the morning or in the after, early afternoon, and maybe done some cleaning around the house, and I'll just say, hey, uh do you mind if I go up to the workshop for a couple hours and like tinker and put around with something? Yeah. And the answer is usually yes, please do. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but also it's the all the way to your spot. My, you know, my wife is like, I'm going on vacation with my girlfriends. I'm like, yeah, you should do, you should do that. Because like when I go to a conference, Really, kind of like I'm going away with my girlfriends. <laughs> like we're right. all just kind of like Larry and Wait, Tyler. And the, 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 no, we're transparent not, not about your, that. Not your girlfriends, not, right? Well, Wait, I mean, well, metaphorically maybe. speaking, right, right, metaphorically right. speaking, like I'm hanging out with Hi, my Shannon. friends. Like, yeah, Hi, Shannon. like <laughs> Shannon knows that. Yeah. And, and we're just now. Totally I just have this picture of like all you dudes in a bikini in Vegas, like there. I mean, kind of. <laughs> don't tell, don't tempt me. Yeah, don't tell. that's oh. kind of how it. <laughs> I mean, we've all been in kilts hanging out together before, so it's really I, right. Much, right. It's not that much of a stretch. Yeah, yeah. I thought the bikinis were optional. Uh, in we Vegas, didn't, we didn't tell are, you yeah. that. I mean, it's they only, were, but we told you, Tyler, that you had to wear a bikini. Yeah, Tyler, that that's just, only a cool yeah. two with the Oxus Park that they're optional. <laughs> you set him up with his waxing appointment, didn't you? <laughs> we don't need to. Tyler has that nailed. He, I I would imagine yeah. Tyler has that like the wilderness must very be well scheduled plan. Oh out. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh boy. It will yeah. be good to get back to into a. I think we'll all fall into a groove of going to conferences yeah. because I mean when I was um, we haven't released it yet, but I've uh, working on a new podcast called Hacker Heroes. And Win Schwartow and I were talking about the importance of continuing the community. Uh, insecurity yeah. like how like pre-pandemic it maybe it was a little too much like we kind of had too much going on on the conference circuit mm -hmm. during the pandemic like there clearly wasn't enough like hallway con is way too important uh to just leave behind and i'd like to see us as a community now move into like a a nicer schedule where we all get to hang out but aren't too stressed about you know amanda your point traveling 16 plus times a year just for conferences it might might yeah. be too much yeah. uh, right i think we're all kind of little i'm hoping we're all looking at things a little smarter i mean i had a a request to come speak at a conference that overlapped another conference i'd already signed up for yep. and there was another event that weekend in the past i would have tried to do all three and it's yes. like this is stupid um yep you got to have fun yeah, you don't want to stress yourself out, you know, doing that three conference in a row mm -hmm. kind of thing because that's burn. I mean, speaking to mental health hackers, right? I think some of it spoke to burnout, Amanda, because we're all working mm -hmm. some kind of job like yourself. We probably got some kind of side gig or 12 yeah. <laughs> and we're doing conferences <laughs> too, right? You can only spend and we've right. fa got families and kids and spouses and whatever. Like, you know, you don't want to spread yourself too thin. You got to live life. Right. It's a balance. Yeah. 
not to say that we're all nailing the work-life balance. I think it's something we all work on all the time. Yeah. And sometimes we get it wrong, and that's yeah, definitely. That's okay, mm-hmm. and you, you, know, yeah. you make you make some course corrections. So, uh, speaking of speaking, you're speaking at RSA for the first time. Are I am. You and excited? Twi- and twice. Ex- I'm ex- speaking twice. twice. Excited? Yeah. Nervous? Like what? Yes. Both. <clears throat> both. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Why not both? <laughs> I hear you. Uh, no. Yeah, so I I am speaking. So uh, speaking of not getting burnt out and going on a bunch of travel stuff, I'm dr- so I live in Northern Ohio. Uh, the Friday before RSA, I'm driving to Milwaukee to go to take my kids to a concert, which is like eight hours. Uh, concert Saturday night. Driving back early Sunday morning because my flight leaves for um rsa sunday evening because my talk my panel talk is at 8 30 in the morning on monday oh, oh my god <laughs> so i thought we were trying to know man there's a group burnout. near you i know <laughs> something health no, I know. you might want to talk to <laughs> yeah i know that's like i need to take my own advice but it should be fine i should not i should not miss anything uh i'm not gonna but yeah i'm gonna be on a panel with a bunch of cool uh guys talking about zero trust um okay. we don't talk yeah. about zero trust. and i uh right no 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 <laughs> and while i know a lot about zero trust not a lot i guess i know a bit about zero trust but um uh i was i came up through the normal way of setting up a network, right? It was still Mm -hmm. least privileged, but you still have like what every small to medium business has, right? Yeah, everything everything can talk to everything can talk to everything. Like you hard active directory on prem, you may have like some VLANs and like some firewalls and crap, but like definitely not zero trust. So I don't know why they have me on the panel. Uh I mean, I know a couple reasons, well, but <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't say that your experience <laughs> certainly qualifies sure. to be on that panel, Amanda. Sure. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, so that's, that's actually really exciting. Um, because I've learned a lot about zero trust over the last year, uh, in preparation <clears throat> for that. And then, wait, did you say uh, your panel, tra- hold on, your panel is at eight thirty in the morning Yeah. and you're, you're coming from Ohio so that's really, is that 7.30 or 6.30 for you? 6.30. No, that would be the other way. That would oh, be it's the other way. 11.30. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, yes. 11.30. Okay. Well, you got that going. Yep. For that's good. Yeah. You can still sleep in. Good. I'll be fine. Yeah. Right. What kind of what kind of um, things have you done to kind of prepare for RSA versus like some of the other conferences? I'm, I'm kind of curious because it is such a uniquely high-level executive premier conference I, I guess we- yes i yeah i was talking to paul about that on, mm. on like the pre-call thing so um so that's on zero trust and then my other one's on sysmon so um i've never i don't think i've ever spoken to that level of audience before um in that aspect right like i've talked to i've talked to c levels and like whatever in, in smaller contexts um so what I've been doing to prepare for both of those is a lot of research. Um, and I mean, Sysmon I work with every day um, because it's on like threat hunting and building detections around Sysmon. And that's literally like half of my job. So that I didn't have to prepare too much. Uh, that was just like looking through customer data and actually finding legitimate use cases that other people could use around detecting Um uh, using it. Yeah. And, and my advice, Amanda, was that I think the RSA audience is a, a really big mix. Tyler, to your point, um, I think some super technical people all the way up through like not super technical people, but people in cyber, maybe at that executive level in the audience. And if you tailor right. to one, you know, kind of crowd or the other, like you're going to get dinged in your reviews. So like you need to kind of co- uh, like in those situations, I'm I almost trying to lean, cover all of it, but mm. I almost lean a little more technically. Cause I, I don't, the people that yeah. are higher level may not complain, especially if you do a great job explaining the technical things, which I know you will. Right. Um, so that, that yeah. would be my advice. And that's kind of the mistake. I was, a, I think a little too high level, um, when I spoke okay. at RSA that one time and I spoke before and it, and it, and it was okay. But that other time, like I, I didn't get the audience as, as well as I should have. <clears> yeah. 
Yeah. So that's, I'm, and I'm also preparing by practicing a ton. I'm not done with my talk yet. Uh, we just had to, re- we just had to turn in our first drafts the other day. Um, so I have a lot of polishing to do and I want to practice it a whole bunch just so the actual presentation of it's polished. Uh, I'm not one of those people. I mean, this is different, I guess. Um, but I'm not one of those people that can just stand up and talk about a topic and make it make sense and flow well. <laughs> yeah, but even, uh, I learned I, that even early those, on. Yeah, but even those of us that maybe have pulled that off, I, I still think that practicing is yeah. like guarantees oh, yeah. your success. Like sure, there have been times when I've stood up, done the slides the night before, and I'm like, oh, like that went great. Usually though, that's when it's a more technical talk and you're talking to a technical audience. You can get yes. away with that, right? Yes. I think it's when it's a mixed audience or a higher level audience that you need to <laughs> practice way more. And I think in either case, regardless, practice makes perfect when it comes to presenting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm doing so far. <laughs> that's awesome. And, and now mental health hackers, is, that, there, is there a presence for that at RSA or no? No. Mm-mm. So you're at some of the other conferences, but you've built up, change gears a little bit. You've uh, kind of built up a, a network of folks that are, are running that, which is yeah, that's a great Thank next goodness. stage of this, uh, you know, company, if you will, that you created, right? I mean, it's oh, I mean, yeah. not, not for profit, but it's a company. Yep. Yeah. So we just like what we normally do in our villages. If I don't know how many listeners have or watchers have, have been, but um, like we have a lot of information around mental health and then we have like blow up loungers that you can like go take a nap or you can color or you can knit or you can play with fidget toys. Um, there's like soft music and little lighting and a bunch of other stuff. So I just package all that stuff in like one of these big gray totes and zip lock it shut <laughs> mm-hmm. and, uh, just UPS it to whoever is going to run it for me. So we have... Um, I think five or six kits just in random places in the U S now. That's awesome. So uh, what conference is coming up, uh, Amanda, can we, can we see the, uh, mental health hackers and experience that besides charm, Colonel con wild west hacking fest, Deadwood. Um, wait, hold on, go back. So for our audience, besides charm where where and roughly when uh that's baltimore in two weeks okay and then colonel uh, con i've seen uh, a reference to colonel con recently where is where is it's that? in kansas <laughs> i don't have any of my notes in front kansas, of me kansas city yeah. is, is one of those it's weird so like a, there's a kansas city in every state yeah right uh, i think it's like <laughs> two, in the state two. of kansas at least two I at least know. two that i know yeah uh, <laughs> There is a Kansas, Ohio, uh, but that it's not too. there. It's in like the, I think the state of Kansas. Um, soon, I don't know exactly when. No, it, 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 um, it's just, I'm just, like any background you have on those on those conferences because sure, I saw sure. a reference to Colonel yeah. Con like the, the other day. I wore my Colonel Con T-shirt. The yeah, other day. yeah. And we tweeted out from Hacker's Health, so we like make sure people know we're going to be there. Mm. Um, oh, let's see here. We just finished two. Oh, Colonel Con 2022, Wednesday, March 30th uh, to Saturday, April 2nd uh, in Omaha, Nebraska. Oh, okay. Sorry, that- Nebraska. No, they're, all the same. Oh. they're all in flyover states. It's fine. <laughs> right. Oh. <laughs> yes. Ouch. You know, Kansas, she has this wonderful thing. We say it out because of- of- he's literally in a flyover state in Idaho. So same, it's man. Same. <laughs> yeah. I'm supposed to ask you about Blue Team Con. Oh yes, Blue Team Con. Blue Team Con's on there. Um, we're gonna try and do Def Con. We were a f- we were like rejected officially from the villages, but uh, we're gonna try and do our own thing in like a suite. Mm. Nice. So maybe B sides DC. Um, B sides DC. B sides DC. I know. I need to talk. I know. I need to talk to you about that. Yes. Um, you know, do we know anybody Texas we should Cyber hook Summit? her up with for B-sides there? DC. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> Josh, well, Josh, Josh, you're involved with multiple B-sides in your yes, kind of I'm, area. I'm on, like you, because you're kind I, of in the like Virginia, Maryland, D.C. I feel like you're involved with conferences in that in that general vicinity, right? 
Yeah, uh, I run B Sides Delaware. I'm on the yep. board of B Sides DC. Um, apparently, I'm being voluntold to help with B Sides Philly. And now, who runs? You, you might have heard of her. Runs LV. Lives like <clears throat> 30 minutes that way. So if you want to be at LV, we can talk. Wait, what's LV? B- okay. B Sides Las Vegas. That would be cool. Oh, okay. that, that is not cool. your neck of the woods. Okay. No, but I used but to be on the board be there. there. Yeah. Nice. And somebody's asking if you can get a nose piercing at the Mental Health Hackers Village. <laughs> Is that a thing? Is that? Does that... Uh, so there's got to be an inside joke there somewhere. There's a, dol- there there's a dolphin piercing that can go right there, and it, it represents yes. a lot of. It does. And then you're in a secret club. <laughs> Larry, Larry had a lot more of those piercings uh, back in back in the day. I, I think did. I think Larry could probably give a whole talk on like where and not where to get. Yep, piercing. I've yep. I've never had my nose pierced, and I just decided randomly like a couple days before Blue Team Con this last year that I wanted my nose pierced. And Ms. Bat used to be a professional piercer, mm-hmm. so I'm like, yep. just bring your stuff. And I almost passed out in the mental health hacker's room. <laughs> almost passed what out from what? Like, what a from great role like, model. What a great role model. From getting my nose pierced. But like from like pain or just like the whole thought of like something's going um, through my nose? No, I don't know what it, what it was. Uh, it wasn't, it was painful, but like I've experienced worse pain. Um, but it got like stuck and she had to redo it again. Yeah. And just oh. all of a sudden I got really, really warm. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I had to lay down. Yep. And had people like rushing to get me alcohol, which was fine. <laughs> but it looks all good now. I mean, it, it looks great. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's get her high, high octane alcohol. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and La- yes. Larry can tell some ho- horror stories, though. I think someone brought me like warm tequila, and I'm like, no, Ugh. like I'd rather Ugh. be sober. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Warm tequila, gross. <laughs> Yeah, Larry, you've, you've had some issues. You've, you've maintained some stuff, but yeah, you've had some... Yeah, some of it you know, took out because of... You know, I, elective I have to imagine and, that yeah. Miss Bat was simply mortified that you nearly passed out. I mean, she's such a sweetheart. She is so kind. She she did she did a fantastic job. Yep. But no, I kind of just like... The fact moved, still I moved. Moved. So wait, is that... Is yeah, this, is this like a regular... Us. Is this like a regular thing at Mental Health Hackers? Like we can get piercings? <laughs> I mean, we could make it one. We could make it one. Like mm-hmm. that's just a corner is piercings. Cool. Is this like a, an accessory? We were talking about this today, like your mental health and like how you dress and how that affects your mental oh. health. Okay, right? Sure. So where would I, you sure. get pierced, Paul? Do, like, what would you have pierced, Paul? Uh, uh, jo- you can pick, Josh. All right. <laughs> oh, oh, no, oh no. don't say that. I'll hold conspire on, with Larry. You, you and Larry can maybe <laughs> maybe discuss it, and maybe I get a vote as well. So we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll how about just it. like all the all the listeners vote? Like it just where? put up. <laughs> That would I be think bad. that's great. That would be I think bad. Everybody get... on Discord, tell us where you want Paul pierced <laughs> yes. at the next mental this health step, hackers. Something's he going below my to belt do it. to get to get yeah. pierced. Yeah, yeah Josh, happens. I think he, Josh, I think he's going to get an yes. Abradavra. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. I don't want to know what that is. I don't give him a ladder. I don't think I want that. No, dude, the, the Aperdavra. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that is, but I don't want it. Shannon will enjoy it. That's okay. Your wife will like it. It's like adding three inches. Perfect. Oh, wow. You know, it's like wow, it's like double. Wow, I know the piercing you should get, but it takes the one you didn't say it. <laughs> you uh, were gonna, I know you were gonna. Oh uh, boy, oh uh, boy, yeah. But I think that you know, so the, the, there is definitely there is a, a, a mental health. Uh, there to is, bring it back to you know, there is a mental. Is. It's similar to like. Like when I dress up in like a shirt and a suit jacket and stuff, like mm-hmm. can you feel good about yourself, right? Like that's it, any yeah. any kind of like that's just my case, they, right? But however you feel like you want to dress up, um, it, it can make you feel good about yep, yourself. There, there's an absolute tie to some some mental health things and disorders for piercing and some of the extreme modifications. Yeah, uh, but also and, like working yeah. from home too. Like you're in your pajamas all day. Like I like coming into the studio. Well, it's not every day. Uh, sometimes I do work from home, but I come into the studio. I'm like, oh, this is my opportunity. I gotta to put like, on. I gotta put on pants today. I gotta put on pants. But sometimes, right. like, maybe I'll put a nice pair of pants on a nice shirt. Like that. That kind. Of, that feels good, right? Yep. Yeah. Same thing with like tattoos. Like, yeah. 
And, uh, you know, I can't go too long without either a haircut, a piercing, or a tattoo. <laughs> mm, yeah, my tattoo appointment was yesterday. So I was going to say, was, you've, got a, you've got a thing. Yeah. Did you have some, some fix-up work or no, additions? No, from the wrist down, it is all new as of, but finished at 10 o'clock last night. So. Really? Yep. Nice. Oh. Yep. I, not- I noticed the... You're fresh. Sa- I noticed fresh. the saran wrap, but yep. I didn't notice that that was... That ended at your wrist before, didn't it? Yeah. Now that you it, say that. Yeah. It, now it, you it, say move that. it to the camera side. Well, sort of. Yeah. It ended. It ended here, and all the the back of the hand stuff is is all new as of nice. ah, there as of. Last and is that night. still Star Wars themed on your? Nope. Yeah, I can't see with the glare. Okay. Nope. Oh no. It is uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Nice. Yep. So. Jack. No, so much for ending at the risk so you could cover it with a shirt. Yeah, that ended a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My Whatever. retail sales career is effectively over. So. Aww. Well, oh. Oof. The picture in 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 uh, Discord of you with the thing in your nose, uh, Amanda, is <laughs> something else. Thomas <laughs> mm-hmm. is done. Yep. There you go. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I think, uh, thankfully, folks are a lot more open-minded about stuff like oh that. Oh my gosh! <clears throat> yeah, I, I think you've, you've experienced that kind of kind of first uh, first, oh, first oh, yeah. hand. I mean, if you will, literally, and literally, literally right? and figuratively. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, and for a long time too, that I was even incredibly self-conscious of it. Uh, in that, you know, when I got tattooed below something that was relatively difficult to mm. hide. Like I, I resorted myself to the fact that I was going to wear a long sleeve shirt to work for the rest of my life, and that doesn't matter anymore, right? Uh, and especially where you know we've been doing this for so long. I like you much without. More, I, I like you without a shirt on, quite I mean, frankly. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it, it it certainly as my career has progressed and that I've made a name for myself for what I know and what I can do as opposed to what I look like. Yeah, people look past the appearance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they don't even recognize the appearance. And like, right. early on in my career, I showed up to a job interview um, in a suit and tie. And the job interviewer was very much surprised because I was there for like a security engineering role. Mm. And she said, I expected you to show up in jeans and a t-shirt and have purple hair. Mm. And I'm like, well, I missed the mark on that one. Right. <laughs> but right. so, yeah. But yeah, definitely have experienced a, a lot of that about, you know, the, the change in appearance and how I looked and, you know, even how I've grown and, and even, changed Even appearance. training too. Uh, yep. I, I, Mandy's doing some training as well and even training you're like as long yep. as the instructor's qualified like people right? look past appearance and as well they should right like what is it yeah. what, is, what does it matter yep exactly. uh, in your training uh, today Amanda tell us, tell us about that have you done in person and, and virtual yeah so we had to switch that too mm-hmm. um, we had just start uh, so my business partner and like one of my best friends Jeremy him and I started a company. Uh, it's called Cybersecurity Conference Training. Uh, definitely what? not like a shell corp. You you went you went for oh, like okay. the direct approach, right? Like let's not be too cute about our. We're name. like <laughs> yeah. let's let's F- seem yeah. like we're like uh, just cleaning dirty money or something, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> 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 there this we is a go. For the mom. Um, no, so. Yeah, we, we only have, uh, we have a couple different trainings, but they're all loosely so far based around um, uh, creating tabletop programs and uh, uh, like IR playbooks and stuff. Nice. Uh, so it's not like a full blown like IR training, uh, but the first two days is instruction on how to perform tabletops and why and how mm-hmm. to create playbooks and why and all of that kind of stuff. And then the second two days we throw everybody in Discord and we have these Discord bots that like send people into different fake companies mm-hmm. and they get different uh, titles in those companies. So like you might get CEO, but you might get like help desk and then there's like an intern and a sec ops person. So there's uh, all of these different roles that you can get and we play it like uh, I can't for legal reasons say the name of the thing that well, we... John, John Strand did Backdoors like, and Breaches, which was based like on a that. popular game. Okay, but you, yes, you're not a using... a popular table. To, yeah, you're not using John Strand's Backdoors and Breaches, but mm-hmm. you have your own spin on that. Yeah. Okay. Right, right. Yeah, we take it further, right? So we actually 
walk through kind of like actors and breaches does but it's all interactive with game masters Mm -hmm. so we do that and then you actually have hit points for your company and your companies have to survive through the two days of training and whatever you can create in the first two days in the uh, playbooks that you create in the scenarios that we walk through helps you in the last two days of training. Nice. And this is all done on Discord? Yeah. Oh, that's innovative. I like that. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, in the beginning, it was great because, like, you could actually roll the die and, Mm. like, that that part was really cool. Um, But now Discord bots do it and... Yeah, I was going to say, so did you you guys... (laughs) Did you guys code your own Discord bots to do this? Uh, do you know Lintile, Aaron Lint? Yep. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. He wrote it for me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so uh, we did. Uh, we did a uh, so session. So those that don't know, Aaron Lint uh, took over the programming and gaming for Hacker Jeopardy at DEF CON. Yes. Nice. Yes. Nice. From yeah, G-Mark. We did. Uh, we did a DEF. Uh, we did a D and D session uh, at work uh, for our all hands meeting that was virtual so we did virtual uh D and we had a great dungeon master and that's how we did everything was through discord uh, for dice yeah. rolls and so forth so it was awesome and so did aaron yes. aaron code it in discord bots to be able there, to there are multiple there are multiple yeah that's interesting yeah and like it keeps track so like if somebody you know uh you know say they uh go to uh, let me think of an example it's not in a class so i don't like ruin anything um uh like you gotta email it it reminds me amanda of the text-based games where you answered questions what were those called muds muds was it muds yeah muds kind of m-u-d muds Muds, right multi-user dungeons yeah yeah. 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 yes it wasn't that double which is which is different from multi-user bdsm houses just to be clear (laughs) you sure God. <laughs> one could say instant response is kind of like BDSM. Yeah, multi-user BDSM. You have houses. to be yeah, glutton for punishment. Right. <laughs> That's really interesting how the things that are old become new again, right? Yeah. So basically, it's a Discord bot that is a mud focused on instant response. Yeah, and it tracks everybody's decisions. So, like, if you have business email compromise, you know, like, oh, I want to, I want to, like, kick this user. I want to, you reset his password. You have to roll for that decision. Mm-hmm. And if you fail, like, no, worse things can't. happen. No, you yeah. can't change my password. <laughs> Hacker uses a tactic. Yeah. Yeah. Active directory. Can't change password because I'm locked out of my account or whatever. Right? You can build those scenarios yeah. into the into the game sure. based on real scenarios they have. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's, yeah there's, and every every scenario that we do is based off of something that either Jeremy or I have encountered. Right. Like real mm. scenarios. You can't change my password. There's a critical business function that depends on my user account and password being the way it is. Because yeah. it's hard coded in the script. Yeah, that never happens. Hard coded in the script. I was waiting for you to say uh. that I hate you so much. <laughs> uh. Uh. Uh huh. And and there's so many services that all, like all of our services that are running use that. Wait, yep. all our servers are running. Why are none of our batching functions happening in PCI world? Oh right. wait, the developer's workstation is off. No. Mm-hmm. No, it's not the developer's workstation. It's so much fun. It's that dot that win uh, that uh, 486DX266 running. DOS with a Novell <laughs> Netware client connecting to a Novell Netware 312 oh, system. It's with, built into uh, the wall. Yeah. 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 Wait, 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 wait. What's going on here? We have a fully up to date network. Everything's patched and updated and everything. Yeah, except for the Windows 98 machine running your badging system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but wait, Josh, we have backups. Can't we just restore from backup? Oh, fuck you. I'm sure. The, <laughs> I'm sure the roll. I don't know. You have you have to roll. You have to roll you for have it. To roll. And, and, and roll, sure. and see roll if you for can. initiative. I tell you what. When you roll the dice, that a backup is going to work. Like your your odds are not. Mm. The odds and are like not in some, your favor. <laughs> some of our companies like they get different skill sets. So like one of the skills that you can choose in the beginning is your backups never fail. Yeah. Ooh. So that's like a skill that you can do. You can also summon Dave Kennedy. Like that's one of the skills. No, and nice. Oh, it's just a one-time use. Uh, you everything gets fixed. <laughs> I was gonna say, but Magic. does everything? Uh, it should be a random, like either everything gets fixed or everyone gets a hug. 
Or you all have to go to the gym Ooh, and lift weights. I like weights. that. Or you all got to go oh, to the I gym like and that. lift weights. And if you go to the gym and lift yeah. weights, then everything gets fixed. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's great. We can add some more dimensions here. I mean, that is that is incident <laughs> response. A lot of dimensions to incident response, mm -hmm. for sure. That sounds like a lot of fun, though. I mean, I think oh, learning should be fun. It sounds like you're making learning fun, which is awesome. Yeah. And I, I like interactive trainings, right? Like, yeah. there's a lot of trainings out there that oh, I think... And I think people will join our training sometimes and just think that they're going to sit and like work and like listen to it in the background. And then day two comes around. We're like, all right, class. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I need yeah. you to do all of this in preparation for tomorrow. And then, you know, not having the interaction doesn't get you as much knowledge around the subject. I don't think. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, I mean not that there's not value in those classes, right? But I think the traditional way to think about learning is that you can do a couple of different paths, right? You can listen to uh, the, what the instructor says every word and try and pay attention the whole time and do all the labs as they're coming at you. Or you can just work on all the labs until you get stuck and then pay attention to what the teacher says. Uh, unless you know they've said that and you missed it which which happened i mean those of us that have taught like know all of the different student personas oh, right yeah. that work that way oh yeah but i think a great way amanda to do the class the way you're describing is like you you have to basically play the game right and be engaged mm -hmm. with the content which is awesome yep so yep. when you when you move this to a a, a live in-person training will you still leverage discord to do a lot of that stuff yes awesome <laughs> yes <laughs> awesome. oh yeah yeah like it's so much easier before we were running around with notebooks and like scratching notes so we could keep track of where every company was with their decisions and like the actual IR process. And it was, it was horrifying. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there's also, there's also something to be said for physical infrastructure as well. Cause Larry and I with CCDC is what I'm thinking of. Like when there yeah. was physical, it was nice to have that physical infrastructure and then day one ends. Then you could make changes to the physical infrastructure. Like go in and just yeah. unplug a couple of Ethernet cables, right? Like yeah. mm -hmm. simulating that yes. virtually is certainly on the table as well. But it was it was neat yeah. to have the the physical <laughs> aspect to that, right? Yeah. And our first our first time we ever gave this training, we also um after every like actual tabletop exercise, we also did hands-on learning. So like I would teach somebody how to do a password spray, how to detect it, how to prevent against it, that kind of stuff. Awesome. And uh, never having built a lab for training before, uh, never thought how it would bring the lab to its knees when you have 15, 20 people performing <laughs> password spraying. <laughs> Uh huh. It's a thing. Oh, <laughs> Against like uh, we've one been DC. There, yes, we've been all there, done been that. There. Yes. Yep. That's yeah. hard. Like, oh gosh. We just oh, no. we just had this with uh, uh the IoT course that uh we uh, deployed for Sans, uh and that uh we de one of the devices that we were doing some attacks against was um uh router OS from Microtik and we stood it up on uh, bare metal arm. Uh, at a provider mm -hmm. somewhere on the internet and uh, after the second class uh, we go to run it again and we can't contact the damn host uh, it turns out the provider took it down and suspended the VM because it kept getting hacked like that was the point <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we're doing it for your we're from the government uh, we're here to help Yeah. For, fortunately it also the same exploit works on uh, router S for uh, Intel so we just provide a local VM for that now those, those are all good lessons, though, right? Like, this yeah. is one of the things we've been providing as a, a strategy roadmap for CISOs as, like, you have to do these tabletop exercises because otherwise you don't get engaged people like legal, like your media, your PR. Yes. Think of a ransomware engagement. Like, unless you've exercised any of these and unless you have a written down procedure, if you've not tabletopped it, you really are at a pretty vulnerable state. And that, from a corporate standpoint, especially bigger corporations, is something that they have to do in order to be prepared. It's a disaster recovery and strategic cyber mitigation that if they're not doing these tabletops, I don't I don't think they're they're actually pre any more prepared than someone that doesn't have EDR or good visibility in a sim. Yeah, not sure. all of us worked at a university in the early 2000s and experienced that firsthand. <laughs> 
that's where tabletops come in handy. We didn't need tabletops. Yeah. The problem Every is week the more, it was a new incident. The problem is in the university oh, it wasn't no. a tabletop. It was an actual. It was event. an actual incident. Yes. Yeah. More more than one a year too is also helpful. Like uh, people forget. Oh, dude, it was yeah. one of my. I mean, in oh, early two thousands, we went from rate to code red to blaster to what S M and D. Like it was it was nonstop. I guess we still it wasn't have that tabletops. Today. It was real life, and it was real life. Yeah, tabletops is a nice way to, to simulate that for sure. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So basically, tabletops are for when you're in the early '90s or when Tyler is around. Yes, or that. <laughs> or that. <laughs> yeah, you don't want you don't want Tyler to do a tabletop. You want to do Tyler to do a live fire exercise. Uh, Amanda, yes. uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Blue Mira. We were talking about that a a, a, oh, a little sure. bit, right? Like you're a uh, yes. I would say like early mid-stage funded sub 100 person uh company which i think is so much fun uh it is a blast i love working here um and so if nobody's heard of blumera or if any of you haven't um we are uh, based out of ann arbor and we are bringing a software as a service sim uh which we have like kind of four major selling points right uh Coming from like, I used to like help install and configure Splunk, which took six months to like sure. three years to actually configure and and make usable. Wait, wait, it takes time um, to configure Splunk and get it working yeah, properly? Right. No. And, and, and Josh, and a lot of money. Mm. <laughs> no. And a lot of money. Yeah. No. So when I started, they told me they wanted to get the SIM rollout and like tuning configuration process down to less than a week. I'm like, you're insane. Like, that's never going to happen. You need months. Like, you have to do this and this and this and this and tuning and blah, 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 blah. And there's no way it's ever going to happen. And they proved me wrong. <laughs> nice. uh, a couple of years later, right, which I'm super glad to say. So we can roll out a sim uh, as long as, like, you can automate, like, the PowerShell script to your Windows boxes um, if you have on-prem in, like, less than a day. So we've had some customers roll it out in hours or now, like, what month's that? I don't even know what today is. The 13th, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday. April, yeah, April 6th, 13th, I think 13th, last, 13th. last week. I know, 13th. I know, like last week though, we had um, uh, our first big reveal of we are the first company to offer a free version of a SIM from Microsoft 365 uh, where you don't have to talk to a salesperson, you can just sign up with SSO, um, put in like your API credentials to your tenant, and like within an hour you have a functioning SIM for 365. Nice. Like with all of our detections, so I think we have like thirty or free? forty or something for 365. Mm -hmm. Free. Yeah. For how long? Currently forever. <laughs> I mean, your data isn't there forever. Uh, I think for free version, it's there for like three months or something like that. So it, roll, sure. it, roll, it rolls every three months. But you're also helping automate so. automate Amen. the deployment out to the rest of the mm -hmm. AD environment, right? Yeah. So like for the uh, for the other versions, right? There's uh, we have four versions. We have the free one that's just 365. Yeah. We have a cloud one that's like 365 Octa Sentinel one other stuff. I don't know. Um, I know that there's another one in there somewhere, but then we have like the full version. Like if you have uh, Fortinet and uh, you know, like a WAF and Linux boxes and on-prem AD, like that's like the full version. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, the the quick rollout is like one of our main selling points. Um, yeah, because that's what we, you know, price, we, I, I was telling you before too, like working with Security Onion, like you got to be really hands on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hands on setting it up. I mean, Doug and Burks and team has created a great, you know, uh, open oh, source project wonderful. and awesome stuff, right? But you could be hands on mm -hmm. with it, and we've uh, Doug's yes. done some training for our, our audience. We've and know your stuff. Got to know your stuff, and you got to be able to deploy yeah. it on your own. So, like when mm -hmm. it comes to Linux, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I can get this agent out there, like no problem. When it comes to Windows, right. like, oh, I gotta make sure I get it out to all my workstations with PowerShell or however you're getting it out there. But like, you got to know that stuff. I think for mm -hmm. you in in Blue Mira, Amanda, it's it's making that easy for the the folks to adopt that targeting some of the smaller enterprises and SMBs yes. that maybe don't have a large staff 
with sure. that breadth and body of knowledge to go, oh, I can just whip up a quick quick script and get that out there. Yeah. Yeah. Because there, I mean, most of our customers uh, don't have security staff. Yeah. or don't have a yeah. full security staff, right? right? They may have a security engineer one person or, or like less. one or two people. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But they, you know, they have IT people, whatever, sure. but they don't have, I mean, to, to roll out and run your own SIM and configure it and keep it up to date and actually working and useful, you need at least one person dedicated right. to it, to do it right. Um, so we wanted to get like past that um, and just make it easier for people to roll out without even needing to know security. So like it's my team and my, 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 my team's job to write the actual detections. So they're not like killing people with alerts. Yes. And then we also build in <clears throat> IR workflows to all of them. So you get like, Hey, this bad thing has happened. Okay. We'll go to this host. Did you see this? No. Okay. Well look here, run this command. And did you see this? No. Okay. Well then run this tool and blah, blah, blah. So we have like all of the workflows built in to every, every detection. And, that, and that's the, hard. That's hard too, because I like when I did that kind of stuff, right. Tenable was kind of similar when you write a vulnerability, you get like really excited about the new vulnerability and you spend time detecting it accurately, making the recommendations, creating the playbooks and all that stuff. And then you, you end and you're yeah. like, I got to do that all over again for something else, right? And you're like, ah, yep. rinse, lather, repeat, right? Yes. yes. I was curious. So that's what does me the, and my help team does. Does the paid version uh, do some of the automation through some of those playbooks and runbooks and uh, integrate into other tools for EDR and quarantine and those kind of things? Like, what, it, what does the paid version give you? Sure. Uh, so... All of our integrations, first off, we have like 30 or 40 different integrations. You can send us logs without limit, right? We don't we don't uh, charge based on how much, how many like gigs you send us or whatever. Um, we do have automation currently and it's, uh, there's a couple things in process uh, and all that's like connecting to the EDR vendors and doing quarantining and, and that kind of stuff. Right now it's just dynamic block listing so like if you're getting scanned or if you get a um uh like a we have some threat list built in right so it's like oh this ip address has been shown for to to be known with this ransomware straight um variant and it's contacting this ip address in that workflow you could be like yes block this and it'll add it to the dynamic block list um Right now, that's the only automation that we have, but I just had a meeting earlier today talking about all of the other things that we now have on our list for this year. Um, and that's one of them is like the quarantining and doing like deleting application passwords in 365 or um, resetting passwords or disabling accounts and, and that kind of stuff. So yeah, we're, we're building all of that in too. That's awesome. Good stuff. That's really kind of bloody covered, impressive, man. Yeah, we covered a lot of a lot of ground <laughs> in the the one thing we haven't talked about is your podcast. Breaking, right. breaking down security. Yes. Also do that. <laughs> and you record on Sunday. Do you uh, live stream or uh, record and, and then release? Both currently. Okay. So we've been yeah, we just switched over to doing live streaming on Twitch. Mm -hmm. Um and we used to just record and we release every week. Um, a lot of times they're two parters because uh, a lot of people like 30 minute podcasts. So we were like recording for like an hour and a half, two hours, and then just breaking them up. Um, and then, yeah, Brian uh, has been doing a lot of Twitch streaming himself. Uh, so I need to, I need to get into that. I have not yet. Yeah, no, Twitch streaming is great. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and uh, still... version two of my book is coming out uh, and later this year too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, oh. you're right. Yeah, in, oh. in your spare time, you write books. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm doing after this. I have chapters due on Friday. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, and what what is what is your book for our audience, uh, Amanda? 
Uh, it is the Defense of Security Handbook. I don't know if you can you can kind of see it back there up top. Uh, up top there. Oh, gotcha. O'Reilly. Yeah, O'Reilly. Yep. O'Reilly. With the little porcupine. porcupine. Yeah. Defense yeah. of Security yeah. Handbook. Yeah. Yeah. We're hey. adding two two full chapters. Nice, uh, Amanda. After we uh, we end, remind uh, me to talk to you about that real quick. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> Sweet. Well, Amanda, thank you so much for appearing on Paul Security Weekly. It was wonderful having you back yeah. on the show. Yeah. Thank really you for was. having me on anytime. And best I need to make it show. out to uh, out to you again. Yes, we'd love to have you here uh, out here in Rhode Island. And uh, good luck at RSA. We hope to see you soon at a security event coming up soon. Heck yeah. Definitely. Thank you. With that, we'll take a short break. Come back with <clears throat> the security news. Stay tuned.